When I first arrived at the institution almost two years ago, when perusing the collection and our holdings of African American and African diasporic art, I realized we had a full set of Elizabeth Catlett's The Black Woman series, which she created 1946 and 1947 while she was in Mexico. Before uh, deciding what the exhibition would be about, I was doing a lot of reading on race-based trauma and specifically research conducted on uh, black women in the U.S. and by black women psychologists. And so I think because it was so much on my mind already, I decided to look at her work through the strong black woman trope, which I think is fairly commonly understood in sort of mainstream media and people are kind of somewhat familiar with it, either that or kind of variations of the angry black woman. Why are you always turning me into the angry black woman? Because you are. Most of the studies of sort of race-based trauma or intergenerational trauma studies have been on Holocaust survivors. Um, so less has been focused on black individuals, but I think it's very much an emerging field within psychology, which is interesting. But also a lot less easy to pinpoint since the strong black woman, although it was not coined until the 70s, the ideas behind it very much date back to chattel slavery and the idea that black women like black men were not human and therefore didn't have the same emotional issues as white individuals so they could just take and take on you know more and more but then obviously if there's no place to put those anxieties those stresses those fears and those things are passed down from generation to generation um, can be really damaging i think of the strong black woman as very much a, a kind of mask it's a protective mechanism if the trope says, you know, you have to be competent, but not too confident, independent, sacrifice yourself for your children, your husband, your community, be a pillar of your community. If you're taking all of that on and you're not able to ask for help or, you know, God forbid, asking maybe if, you know, anyone could, could take on some of that weight, um, there is a real cost. And I think the Maybe Catlett was aware of, or maybe this was the way that she was thinking about it. I think you can definitely see it in her works. You can see it in the fact that most of the women that she depicts don't speak. The only moments where her women open their mouths is when they sing. And so the idea that if black women are to speak, maybe that has to come in the form of art or music, or it has to have some sort of medium through which they can be understood and accepted. A number of the women appear to be strong, both mentally and physically, but for the exhibition, I'm curious to see whether we can read these figures differently and what seems to be strength and confidence can actually be a form of repression and suppression of emotions and emotional trauma that black women experience on a daily basis. A number of the images explore questions and issues that were as important in the 1940s or earlier as they are today, and obviously, the times have changed. We no longer live in Jim Crow segregation in the US, but you still see very much the legacy of that period. We're trying to think as an institution more about the stories that we haven't been telling. And obviously my area, there's a lot we haven't told. And I'm hoping through this exhibition and through increased scholarship in the field, we'll get closer to a more equitable world, which would include having Elizabeth Catlett as a uh, familiar name as Rembrandt or Picasso or any of the white male artists that we consider icons today.